I feel very uncomfortable being in the girls' bathroom. You shitting me? I wish people would stop interrupting my peace and quiet. What do you want, peace and quiet forever? That must be the most boring existence I can imagine if you're constantly alone. She isn't she? What's that horrible stink, Hermione? What the fuck do you think it is? Now, we need one more ingredient for the potion to be completely effective. We're going to need a bit of goil to complete the potion. That's disgusting! But how will I find goil? At this time, he's usually filling his face down in the dungeons. All you need to do is follow the trail of food, get the bit of goil and bring it back here to me. Good luck, Harry! Uh, thanks, Ron. Hmm. Ron serves absolutely no purpose in the game's version of the Polyjuice Potion part of the story. I'm literally going to be following a trail of... drumsticks? And they're not even partially eaten. I guess banging the armor around isn't going to alert him to my presence. Oh, never mind. Uh, fucking Goyle. Those drumsticks might be worth something alongside the beans. Maybe you can get an extra card or two that way. There's literally, like, gotta be a dozen lying on the ground. You don't even have to tell anyone you found them on the dungeon floor, of course. Just pick any large particles of dirt off that people would visually notice and you're good to go. And sometimes it seems like when you cast Lumos, the camera takes over for a few seconds to direct your attention to whatever that particular gargoyle activated. Like a transparent wall or whatever. And other times it doesn't do that at all. It just leaves you standing there to figure it out yourself. And that may seem stupid at first, but I think they actually did it right. And what I mean by that is the default rule should be that there's no camera cutscene or any other help to show you where the Lumos mechanism is unless it's necessary to proceed through a lesson or some other part of the plot, as opposed to just an optional room off to the side. Now, do I even know what general direction Goyle is headed towards? Because this doesn't look anything like a dungeon or some other dark, unlit area that might appeal to a Slytherin that had spent a year and a half living in that sort of a common room. I'm assuming he's even heading for a common room in the first place. And of course, you can only stick some beans in some chests that may be tricky for some people to find, but other chests like this one that are just standing out in this opening that you can't possibly miss, you would place a card in there, which is more valuable. And So I don't understand why it's like this unless the developers wanted to make it so that the cards were easier to find, so more players would find most of them. And if that's what they were indeed thinking, that's okay, I suppose, but... Since I don't know that for sure, I remain confused about it. Come on, get up there. Oh well, it's just one bean, who cares. How is there no railing on this staircase, by the way? You could fall and fuck yourself. Now, I've, yeah, I've got to go after them now. They're just too easy. Uh, it's so greedy of me to constantly, uh... Hmm, it's directly below, and I might need to back up gradually until I fall off, and then try to fall forwards a bit so I can grab the ledge. Yeah, like that. And... Uh, fuck, that block on the ground was there the whole time? I could have used that to get up here initially. Fucking shit. Well, this looks like a neat place to study. Just come up here, relax, and enjoy the obstructed view of the great outdoors. But why isn't there any glass in these windows? Or are they windows? Whatever, they're open archways regardless. I mean, sure, you could get fresh air up here, but you could just have a window that opens and closes, not a hole in the wall that always lets the rain in. And who designs a pathway like this anyways? Goyle must be at least somewhat athletic to be able to come up here and outrun Harry like this. And Goyle would have to be able to get down here too. I assume he must have just jumped or stumbled off. I don't know. Alright, here we go. 
smooth. But that's what happens when you run off the edge instead of jumping off the edge. Yeah, I know, that was my mistake, but still, kind of annoying. Ah, <sighs> jeez, damn it. Why do half of these Lumos hidden areas need to be so difficult to find? I mean, I get it, don't make shit too easy, but... Uh, I don't know, I'm... Are you fucking serious? Okay, that one was all you, Harry. I jumped that time. It's your job to automatically grab on when you smash your chest into a ledge. Well, what's that all about? What is that supposed to do? Seems totally pointless to me. I mean, if I could pull it out, I could climb on top of it, but I'm still not sure that would necessarily take me anywhere useful. No, that's the top of this hole in the wall right here, so I really can't imagine what this flippendo block is for. A nice landing. Good thing you landed there on both feet. Because if one of your feet missed, you would have crushed your balls pretty badly. Let's maybe try this again, I don't know. Yeah, I don't get it. I mean, maybe if I tried random things, it might be able to figure it out after a few minutes, but I don't feel like spending that much time on it. Shit, that's, uh, that's new. What the fuck? That's fucking scary. I mean, like, god damn. Alright. Hitting it easily enough. Looks like it has a prolapsed anus, too. Presumably, the strength of Harry's Flipendo spell is the same as it's always been during his second year at Hogwarts. Is the spell simply capable of flipping over a much larger animal or object with the same amount of energy without requiring any additional exertion on the part of the spellcaster? Because that'd be handy. Did someone stick a bunch of upright bowling pins in there for comedic effect? The sounds the game makes are humorous enough, in my opinion. There's all kinds of weird noises in this game, and I'm not saying that as if it's necessarily a bad thing. Having bowling pins sound effect is fine, as far as I'm concerned. But some of the sounds these animals make when you blow them up are just odd, if not outright funny at times. What I'm unsure of is whether the animal noises are unintentionally funny, or if they sound like that on purpose because the developers were just having a good time and wanted to have a bit of fun. I'm hoping it's the latter, because some of those noises have genuinely made me laugh a few times. Wait, why am I even going up on this ledge? Got shit to do and places to be. How do I even know Goyle walked in this direction, though? There's, there are so many different paths he could have taken along the way, and... It's not like he's dropped drumsticks along the entirety of this path so far. He hasn't been on my side for maybe the last ten minutes or so. And what's the point of having drumsticks in the first place if they're not going to help guide you through the rest of this level? <laughs> it's just ridiculous how the snails... scream? Why? And I'm not even sure what they're doing exactly. Whatever it is, it requires that they probably have some sort of vocal cords, though, and... Who's sitting around making a game like this and thinking to themselves, you know, in addition to the slimy sound effect of crawling around on the ground, let's also give them shrieking and snorting sound effects, since that's what people expect a snail to sound like when they're falling from the sky or being launched around by a magical spell. I mean, pixies at least don't exist, so you can use your imagination there, and the high-pitched noises they emit make sense, given that one would typically associate higher-pitched sound with smaller bodies and therefore smaller vocal cords anyways. I'm not sure if I successfully shot a spell through that Lumos wall or not, but 
I should try to test that out and pay more attention next time. Oh, thank god that bookcase moved off to the side. I was worried I would have to climb over that comfy chair in order to move forwards. Ugh. Supersized farting liquid flamethrower shit turtle again. Get the fuck out of here. Hmm. I might need a minute here to figure this one out. That didn't even show anything that time. Why have a cutscene? Oh. Oh, Alright then. Okay, so I just need to line up the colors facing me to unlock some doors or something. Jeez, even these wooden things have to make fart noises. Is that the same stairway, or did the camera simply show it? properly this time some stairway opposite of this uh, area it might have been the same one i think it was in fact i don't i don't know You know, in a way, I'm glad the game makes a bunch of weird farting noises and other sounds. It's much funnier if I point out the game doing it instead of just making those sounds myself. If it were me doing it, it would just be cringy. I think that frog just can change its jump in mid-air. They just, these spiders just crawl up onto you and don't do anything. They really don't get it. Oh, so there was a second staircase, it just doesn't seem to be hidden by a Lumos wall. Although there's still a gargoyle there. wonder what that activates. Now this chest is oddly placed, I don't want all the contents to fall into that hole. God damn it, Peeves, fuck off. Fucking, okay, I guess he's done. Uh. Oh no. They've hidden beans in the ectoplasma. That's fucking gross. Did a ghost try to eat them and then the beans just passed through and they shit them out all over the place covered in the green slime? Fucking disgusting. Clean up after yourselves for once. The students will probably still accept them for trading purposes, though, since they seem to trade them for cards and other goods rather than eating them. You probably won't notice any difference. But I don't think even casting Scourge at the Beans a second time would even help. That ectoplasmic residue was always left behind on any surface it touched. Ugh. Ectoplasma. Ghost shit. Bean flavor. Ugh. Seriously, where the fuck are some of these Lumos areas that are so well hidden? They're good. I might have to play this another time just to figure it out. I do like the curved staircases for some reason, though. Do pixies just live anywhere they please? And why would this one be flying around inside an attic? Surely it would enjoy flying around much more outside on a sunny day like today. I'd much rather walk around outside at a park rather than stay confined to a treadmill, for instance. Just something about the atmosphere, you feel like you can move more freely on a pathway instead of a treadmill. And I don't remember there being so many wooden buildings on the Hogwarts grounds. 
Hogsmeade probably built most of the houses and shops out of wood, I suppose, but Hogwarts is primarily built from stone, right? Shit, I, okay, I thought there was like a monster or something standing there. But it's just a table with some pots on it, so I feel a bit silly. Literally thought there was some dude standing there. I'm glad the range of these spells is greater than the range of those thorns. Doing that, it'll never come out. Man, I'll fuck you up real good. Uh, uh, yourself, shit lord. Uh, I guess it's stuck sitting there now. Two beans behind that exploding bush. That was a great use of my time and energy. There isn't even anything else over here, and the wall is too high to climb, too. Wait, what the hell am I doing? I wasn't even climbing up the right stack of hay bales. And I almost couldn't see that chest over there. It's Decently camouflaged against the dark wall cast in the shadows. Great, more shitty monsters to deal with. We got fire snails, tentacle monsters, and Isis GMO all over down there. I was really hoping that door would crush those man-eating plants down there. It would have been awesome, but no, I gotta deal with them myself, as usual. I do everything myself in this game, except for Hermione brewing the polyjuice potion. Ron doesn't do a goddamn thing other than fly a car into a tree. Why does this spell need to fucking hit the lowest part of the rope? There's several more feet of rope that you can clearly see and otherwise aim at. There we fucking go. I don't care about your pose, Harry. Come on. Fucking annoying. You took eight seconds to stand there and hold up your wand while striking a weird pose. Why would you do that? Huh, that sounded oddly sexual. I wonder if it dies if it goes into the water. Whoa. Interesting. So it floats on its backside and then glitches itself down the grass. I guess it's stuck there, it hasn't gotten up yet. Yeah, I think it's permanently stuck. So it's as good as dead. I think it was afraid to go into the water too after seeing what happened to the fire crab. I have to be careful to not wake Goyle. There he is, sleeping like a particularly ugly baby. That's not like you at all, Harry, saying such things. Oh shit, it's a bomb! Uh, must have... okay. Well, must have been a glitch for the first couple of seconds. What did you say about not waking Goyle? I figured you might whisper your incantations like you did when you snuck around with the invisibility cloak under Filch's nose last year. You're almost yelling them out loud, dude. That and the unlocking doors and the clanging of the cauldrons. Uh, ugh, Jesus Christ, just fucking shut up for once. Guess these are empty areas. 
I don't think there's really any way to sneak up on him other than walking towards him normally. What did I do? Rub his stomach? What sample of his DNA did I grab? <laughs>